friends, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride, back again with another video, and today I am very excited to set up my husband's 2023 bullet journal. We're moving into a new notebook, and not only a new notebook, but a different size. This is the B6 size notebook from Archer and Olive, so one size down from the A5. Since Jason, my husband, is always on the go, he uses his bullet journal at work, he takes it with him when he's traveling, he wanted to try out a slightly smaller notebook, so we're gonna see how this works for him. So in this video, not only am I setting up the initial spreads in his bullet journal, but I'm also going to do his January setup, so he's all ready to go for the new year. He has some time off till the end of the year, so this is the perfect time for him to put in all of his show dates, his work schedule and everything into his January calendar, so he's ready to go on January 1st. Starting on the inner cover, I'm creating a really simple 2023 header using this really rounded traditional style font and decorating the spread with some simple loopy lines. I'm using Archer and Olive's Acrylograph, the 0.7 millimeter nib. I'll link all the supplies I'm using in the description box down below so you can check them out if you want. And as always, if you shop with Archer and Olive, be sure to use my affiliate code PBB10 for 10% off. To make things a little more interesting, I decided to fill in the 20 and leave the 23 as an outline. I did feel like the lines for the loop-de-loop -loop lines and for 23 looked just a little thinner than I wanted. I wanted them to look a little bolder, so I went back in and just thickened up those lines a little bit. to use my stamps throughout the setup so I thought I would write out Jason's name with stamps and that's the sort of header section done flipping to the next and final spread for this setup this is the most super simple yearly setup you could do basically in a bullet journal just a header and a future log Jason really relies on his future logs so I wanted to make sure he had more than enough space even though we were moving to a smaller notebook so my solution for this was to split up the future log into two spreads. So rather than trying to fit all 12 months on one two page spread, I'm splitting the future log into three single pages of four months each. So he has more space to utilize the spread. Starting with the header future log, I'm using that same serif font. This time I'm going to fill in all of the letters and adding one big loop to loop line behind it. I really like how this lettering looks, how bold and impactful it is on the page. Moving on to the actual calendars for the future log, I'm using my stamps to stamp out the months and then just using a really fine nibbed pen to write out the calendars. Over to the next page, I'm continuing on with the future log from May through to December, again using my stamps to stamp out the months, and then using my Secure Micron to write out the calendars. I like how even though this notebook is pretty significantly smaller than an A5 size notebook, there's still more than enough space to utilize the future log because it's been split into three separate pages. I felt something was missing with the calendars, so I went in with a gray Tombow brush pen and just highlighted the days of the week at the top of each calendar, just to add a little bit of something to the spread. So that's it for the yearly spreads, moving on to the January ones. So for January, I knew I wanted to do a raccoon theme for my husband. He loves raccoons. I would say they are probably his favorite animal. And he definitely misses the lack of raccoons out here in the prairies. We had so many raccoons come to visit us when we lived in Toronto. And out here, they're just not a thing. We have a lot of wildlife, but not raccoons. 
and he's very sad about it. So I thought it would be a really nice surprise for him if I did a raccoon theme. And this is a theme I've wanted to do since I started making his bullet journal because he's always loved raccoons, but I put a lot of pressure on myself to do it perfectly <laughs> because he loves them so much. And all that pressure made me keep pushing it aside for different themes. But I finally went for it and I love how these turned out. So this is inspired by a couple different styles of cartoonish raccoons that I found when I was doing research. And I really wanted to get across raccoons' personalities because raccoons have really big personalities and are very playful and silly. So I tried to pick poses that got across that silliness and funness. I wanted to start by painting the base for all the raccoons before going back in and inking them. So I mixed two shades of gray, a lighter gray and a darker gray, and I made sure to add some brown to the grays so it was a little warmer in tone. And I also used some black paint for their paws. One great thing about working with gouache is that it dries relatively quickly as long as you're not using a huge amount of water. So I was able to move between these at a pretty quick pace and get the main portion of the painting finished. As always, my husband's monthly setup is including a cover page, his monthly calendar, and then notes pages. Flipping back to the cover page and it's time for the inking. So I'm using a Secure Micron in 01 to draw in all of the features. So the nose, the mouth, the eyes, and then also to outline the entire drawing. This first drawing is a raccoon sitting back playing an acoustic guitar and really getting into it, eyes closed, singing along. <laughs> Obviously this is not realistic to what raccoons would do in real life since they can't play the guitar, but my husband is a musician, so I thought he would enjoy the combination of his favorite instrument and his favorite animal. I always struggle to draw guitars, I don't know why, especially the strings stress me out, but I feel like this one turned out pretty nice. I also stamped out January underneath since this is the cover page. Flipping over to the calendar spread, and this little raccoon is, in my mind, a little baby who hasn't really figured out the whole climbing deal yet. So they were walking along this branch with their family, you know, the last little baby in the line, and they tripped and started to fall. So now they're hanging onto the branch and kind of wildly swinging their legs, <laughs> trying to get back up, which is something we saw more than once back when we lived in Toronto. The calendar itself is super simple and straightforward. I just made it as large as I possibly could, so he could still have big days to write his schedule in, even though the notebook is smaller. For the branch itself, I decided to keep it really simple and sort of sketchy so that the raccoon would really stand out and the branch was just sort of quickly sketched in to give context <laughs> for why he's hanging in that position. And flipping to the final spread of this setup, the first page of his notes pages, which he uses as his daily log. So here I wanted to draw a raccoon sort of holding up the letters of the header here. Um, raccoons are very 
dexterous with their hands. If you've never seen a video of raccoons washing their food and eating it, you should definitely check it out because it is so fascinating to watch the way they use their hands. So I really wanted to highlight that quality and just have this little raccoon holding up the S in notes. And that brings us to the end of this setup. I'll do a little flip through of all the spreads here, the yearly spreads, the header and the future log, and then of course his January spreads. I revealed this setup to him last night after I finished filming and he loved it. I think it's possibly the most positive reaction he's ever had to a spread and that's saying a lot because there are many themes that he's absolutely adored but this one definitely made him a bit emotional and i was really glad that he loved it because i'd put so much pressure on myself to do a good job with a raccoon theme so i think the smaller size notebook is going to work for him which is great and i hope all of you enjoyed the setup as well if you did give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already Leave a raccoon adjacent emoji in the comments down below. I don't think there's an official one, but pick one that's close to it if you made it all the way to the end. Don't forget to watch all of the Plant Mist videos that have gone up before this one. They will all be linked in the description box down below in the Plant Mist 2022 playlist. And with that, I'm gonna get going. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you really soon in my next one for Plant Mist Day 6. Bye friends.